And we're back and we have in studio Miss Amy Jex. Uh, welcome, who's here to talk to us about mental wellness in Belize. And we also have joining us uh, via Zoom, uh, Jeremy Vargas, who's also a counselor. And um, we have a special guest with us, uh, Miss Heavenly Tillett. And she will be joining us very shortly. She just stepped away for a moment. Uh, but Heavenly is a mother of two who mm -hmm. is brave enough to share with us her story about battling depression. Um, so good morning, everyone. Thank you for morning. being with good us. Good morning. Good morning, Hi. April, Marlene, and Miss Amy. Hi, good yeah. morning. Hi, thank you for having me here. Morning, Jeremy. Morning, Miss Heavenly. Yeah. So it's, you know... It's always a good time to talk about mental health yes. um, because there's always someone who may be struggling and not realizing that there are opportunities to get help. Um, and I want to start off with that because Amy and Jeremy both uh, do private practice in Belize um, and we've seen an increasing number of persons accessing mental health care. Uh, but given the issues surrounding the pandemic, um, let's talk about what you're seeing in today's date. You want to start, Amy? Sure. Um, you know, private practice for me, I started in 2013. And because of COVID, it has transitioned. Back before the pandemic, I had a really ethical and moral kind of thing. Do I do online sessions? Mm -hmm. And now online sessions are the norm. Mm -hmm. I do online sessions three days per week. I split my week half and half between online sessions and in-person sessions. Right. That has been the major change. Second, you know, you're, you're more careful regarding who is in a vulnerable population. So if you have someone who has an immune disorder, you know you'll prioritize them by not having them come in. And of course, there's the uptick in diagnoses in different, you know, in different areas. So even though I saw mostly depression and anxiety before COVID, it's just ballooned up significantly. Yeah. So people will walk in with something and you see the underlying depression, you see the underlying anxiety that mm -hmm. they present with or that they have behind what they're presenting. Yeah. So sometimes those symptoms are upfront and sometimes they're the underlying condition. So you really have to take time to go through and see exactly what people are presenting so that you don't miss something. And I think one of the bigger issues, I don't know if for Jeremy, but for me, being in private practice, we have to be cognizant that a lot of people are in a different financial situation mm -hmm. at this point, right? So it's very important to see maybe someone who lived out district used to be able to come and go every week or every two weeks. Mm -hmm. And now that's not possible, but still they, they don't feel some of them, they want to come in. And so we have to make arrangements and, you know, be more understanding of people and their financial situation. Whereas before, if I need counseling, I'm going to figure out a way to do it. Yeah. But now I know I need counseling, but financially I can't afford it. Mm. So we have to talk. Where do you live? What are the resources in your area? Do you need testing? Do mm. you need an official diagnosis for purposes of homeschooling mm -hmm. or, you know, or, or for work? Because all of these things now, because of COVID, let's say you are someone who works in the office, but in your office, you work in a very crowded environment and that gives you anxiety. Yeah. So we have to sit down and look. So let me give Jeremy a <laughs> <laughs> but, but I'm glad, and, I'm, and I wanna use uh, what you've just said as a jumping point for you, Jeremy. Because one of the things that um, I, I wanted to know is what do you find to be the catalyst like the final push for somebody to call up uh, a therapist or a counselor and say, I want to make an appointment and show up mm -hmm. subsequently? That's actually very, an interesting question because it varies depending on the person. Mm -hmm. A catalyst can be the pandemic that's happening right now where they no longer have the freedom to do the things that they want to or could have in the past. Or it can be a family member who constantly prods and pushes them and then they feel like they're 
overwhelmed and then they recognize, hey, I need to do something for myself. Other times it's a coworker or even a friend who says, you look a little bit off, off today, what's going on? And then it sparks that conversation about mental health. But then again, too, there are some individuals who don't have that level of support and have to battle this, whatever psychological condition on their own and they have to self-reflect and they'll realize that they need to do something different, not necessarily therapy or counseling, but something different when they aren't living the life that they want for themselves. They notice that they're spending more time in or they haven't been going to the gym or they've been ordering food more often rather than cooking and different life changes. And it doesn't happen as a flip of the switch. Yeah. Sometimes it just gradually happens and then you wake up one day and realize, hey, something's different. Yeah. So I, I'm glad you said that because very often, you know, there is this stigma or this myth, I should say, that people think there's a, a nervous breakdown or meltdown that makes you go into uh, therapy or, or to seek counseling services. Mm -hmm. It could just be that you recognize or somebody helps you recognize that something's wrong. But we have uh, At this point, we see a lot more of that building up. Mm -hmm. You knew you needed therapy for a long time. I think that's what Jeremy was saying. You knew you needed therapy for a long time, but now you feel that in order to continue going, you need to do something different. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's not so much um, a breaking point, mm -hmm. but you can visualize the breaking point down yeah. the road. Mm -hmm. um, for some people, it's a lot of i just feel tired for other people it's i don't want to be living anymore you know it could it could be as extreme as i'd never had a suicidal thought before and it happened to me last week something needs to happen yeah, yeah. all right let's let's bring heavenly into the conversation she's back now good morning good morning all right can we let me let me see if we can hear you can you say good morning again Have any, are you Good morning. There? Oh, there yeah, you yes, are. Yes. yes, we can. So first of all, I want to say thank you for uh, choosing to share your story with us. And uh, with that, just, just tell us, you know, um, what made you realize uh, that you were battling depression? Well, for me, it started like two years ago when... Um, I had my first child and then um, it was like I was going through changes in my body. I was alone sometimes and then sometimes you just don't want people around and then I started to feel sad and then I cried all the time. and. I was just going through like a whole, um, it was different for me because I was like so used to something and then changed into something else. I don't even know how to explain it, mm -hmm. yeah. but it was like a life changing situation with my first child. And then I, and I was going through personal stuff in my life at the same time. Like, it was just a lot. It was just mm -hmm. a lot to deal with and to realize that I was having depression and anxiety. Like, before I got a car, I remember going to catch the bus. And I was going to get the bus and I sat at this bus terminal. And I just started to cry for no reason at all. I just, there at the bus terminal with lots of people there, I just sit there and... I cried and I was going on the bus and I was still crying and I sat there and cried for like a whole hour mm -hmm. and then I realized that yeah you know what something is definitely wrong with me and I didn't even know how to cope with the situation to be honest. Mm -hmm. So what'd you do? Yeah. For me, I, I didn't really seek counseling because um, I feel like people don't understand me and I feel like, I feel like 
nobody understands what you're going through and then you went you go to counseling and then you feel like that's not helping either so i just started to like do my makeup when for me my therapy is doing my makeup and taking pictures of myself and or i know that people may say oh um you shouldn't post your business on social media or social media um isn't however um people socialize or um everybody have like their own way of venting or stuff i just started to i feel like i was a mess oh i am still a mess actually um i just post on social media and then i have like people who communicate with me and talk to me and be like you know like and then this is when i realized like it's not only me going through it and it's like it's like a lot of everyone is going through battles of their own and you just have to find something that makes you want to be here like and not commit suicide for me it was my baby i feel like in my past i have went through like a lot in my past i was when i was a little girl i was molested sexually i was sexually harassed and by family members and or, or and step family members of course and um because i didn't really grow up with my mom so i that is what made me like not try to commit suicide again like sorry that i can't like do that because i have a little girl and i don't want her to have to go through that when she is while she's growing up i don't want her to have to feel like because i committed suicide she should resort to the same thing and she have the same problems as me and so i feel like the only reason i am alive is because of my baby and now i am with my second child and i'm going to be honest i didn't want a second child but then the baby was there and i had no choice but to keep her and so now i have two girls mm -hmm. and i am i well i just had baby like two weeks ago oh, wow. and I am going to, like, at this point right here, I'm going to the worst time, like, physically, mentally, emotionally, and then I just feel like, I feel like it's, it's, um, postpartum depression and my depression and the anxiety all mixing up together. And then, like, postpartum depression and my depression is, like, two totally different yeah. things. Heavenly. Um, Sorry, I, I didn't. I thought you were finished. It's, it's just a lot. It is a lot. No, I'm finished. Keep going. Um, no, I, I just want to say thank you for sharing your story with us. Um, not many people are brave enough to speak of when bad things happen or when they have emotions uh, that are not joyful and happy. Um, as you know, we have two counselors with us uh, who. Uh, can be able to chime into the conversation. Mm -hmm. I know, Amy, you, you had something you wanted to, to share with her. Um, thank you very much, Heavenly. I, I, I really appreciate your, your candor, your opportunity to use this platform to share about what your experience has been. Um, I think for a lot of people, counseling means being ready for it. Mm -hmm. And it seems to me, Heavenly, that you have done a lot to build up to where you have. You mentioned the history of trauma. You mentioned depression. And, you know, there can be double depression when you have a history of depression and you can have postpartum depression. So you can have more than one diagnosis at the same time. Um, I know that through this media, we can do a lot to create awareness about 
taboos of not being able to speak about this in our communities, in our public. So I really want to say thank you. I must say there is nothing wrong with using your social media to say what your story is. It's your social media. That's what you want to put out there. You know, you can do that. That's your platform. If you feel very strongly about something, it's very good to be able to use your platform to speak your truth. So I really yeah. appreciate everything that you have gone through and be here to share with us, especially this morning when we have so much awareness. And I know that you have been reading up about depression, about postpartum depression. You have been able to see some of these things that will be able to help you. You've been helping yourself. One thing I want to point out is you don't have to do the journey alone. You know, you, you really don't have to do the journey alone. And you mentioned that counseling may not help you, but for a lot of people, it does good. And it's not that you need counseling forever. You go in, you speak to a therapist, the therapist listens. We can lay out a pattern of, of changes you have been making. We look at what changes you want to continue making. And we set goals for what you want to achieve in life. Living with depression is not suffering with depression. Mm -hmm. You know, I've heard on social media a lot in the past month. I'm suffering with this. I'm suffering with that, you know, but we don't suffer with anxiety. It's a human nature to have anxiety. We experience anxiety, all of us. Even people who don't have clinical diagnosis of anxiety experience anxiety. And it's just the, the strength, the intensity of, of the emotion that may qualify you for a diagnosis. So I will say, you know, it's really important to, to recognize your journey and your path. And, and if you are ready to have a therapist walk along you on your journey, I, I would highly recommend that you move in that direction, you know, because processing something on your own is good. But when you process it with a therapist, it, it takes you to another level. Yeah. That outside perspective really would help you to see more of your progress a lot of the time, yeah. because especially when you have a history of negative thoughts, a history of others putting you down, a history of not feeling good enough, Sometimes you don't pick up on your own little, you know, triumphs. Progress, yeah. Yeah, so and, and so I think it's really nice to take a look yeah. and, and see what the process is like. Yeah. Um, like Mr. Mr. Jeremy and I were saying, you know, our practice has evolved where we do online counseling. Mm -hmm. And we, we do have resources in every district. Yeah. You know, we have um, the Ministry of Health who provides counseling in all the districts, who provides the PNPs yes. in every district, psychiatric help. It may have been to a point where medication management could have helped you as well, Miss Heavenly. You know, it, it's an option. It's not something that you have to do. But very often when there is severe um, intense depression, it, it does help people a lot. And, and I want to use, you know, you said some really critical things in your story, because I'll be honest, we all throw out mental uh, diagnosis, mental, mental illness diagnosis casually. We say, oh, I'm depressed. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm, I may just be having a sad day. Um, but you talk of some of the things about uncontrollable crying, um, some of the things that uh, perhaps uh, the psychologist will be able to share are in fact signs of depression. Um, Jeremy, let's let's get you into the conversation here. Heavenly story, um, I think, is one where you've all heard some version um, of or combination of these issues. Uh, let's let's talk about uh, recognizing uh, signs of depression. So. <laughs> Recognizing signs of depression, um, it's an interesting topic in that it looks the same yet different for everybody because we all have our own coping strategies that we use, right? Miss Heavenly, um, you talked about putting on your makeup and feeling good on the outside in hopes that it makes you feel good on the inside too, and it works, right? We, we call those client-created strategies, and mm -hmm. it works. Um, 
recognizing signs like uncontrollable crying, uh, insomnia, waking up too early and can't going back, can't go back to sleep, lose loss of appetite, yes. loss of interest in things. These are all diagnostic criteria for depression, right? And I use the word diagnostic because it's it's to give a diagnosis, but that doesn't mean that you need to have all these things to benefit from assistance from a therapist or a counselor, right? Because a mental health professional on the journey, as Ms. Amy was saying, it gives you a different perspective. However, the only person that decides if that's the best thing to do is an individual, right? Nobody can force you to do therapy or counseling because then it's not going to be as effective. Yeah. Now, those symptoms, when you recognize them, what to do next, right? That's where it gets a little bit scary because we start to worry about the stigma that is, what will people say if they see me going to this place or are they going to judge me? Um, will they call me crazy? That word always gets thrown around mm -hmm. casually. Yeah, and I, think, I think that's where my fear lies. Like, um, when I think that's where my fear lies to like get help. I don't want anybody to, well, I know people probably already think I'm crazy going, venting on social media and what's not, but I do feel like going to an institution and being judged for it is like a huge part of why I'm scared to actually get like that serious help because I have tried, but then like you said, the part where that individual have to figure out what, com what comes next. Yeah. Like that's where it got scary and then that's where I bought down. And then I just, but Heavenly, everything um, just keep all over again. Heavenly, you, you talked about going on social media and you said that you shared your story on social media. And just first of all, that is really, really brave because social media can be a very cruel mm -hmm. place. Um, do you find that people are responsive to your posts and do you think that other people are um are taking it seriously then that they're taking mental health seriously on social media i you're a young you're a beautiful young lady um so i would imagine that your generation is the same age and young like yourself that you guys are talking about mental wellness are you speaking about that on a serious um level no because i i would say no because um i post i do post but i as soon as i start to get like comments or so i delete it because i don't want anybody to feel like if i am asking anyone to feel sorry for me and mm -hmm. asking you sorry for me well i feel like that's how i the people feel towards me and they're always like oh you're beautiful um i hope that you um get through this or people don't i, I think they when you're beautiful or when you're you have stuff going on for you people would think that you don't have depression or you can't oh yeah mm -hmm. move. you're you're not supposed to go through this yeah mm -hmm. yeah no that's that's you know, very common yeah. that's very i common. don't think that my generation takes mental health illness um seriously and if it's a very serious it is a very serious situation like i i go through it like every single day I'm always crying and venting, so I know. And they will say you have to be strong, you have to pray, but it's just hard. It's just hard. It, it, it's it's something. I don't think it's something that you can actually do on your own. Yeah, you know, it's we can mention the beauty queen. Uh, I was several going to okay. say, yeah, that's uh -huh. such a classic example, and I think everybody went back to look at her social media post to see were there signs of unhappiness before that and and there weren't there weren't any signs you can you can be you can cloud the that, most yeah. because as miss heavenly says people discourage you from being your genuine person well i do want to say something here though i think 
and, and this is just my opinion, please, your, your professional opinions are, are far more uh, weighty. But I think when sometimes you put things out on social media, that it is you needing to get it out. Yeah. Um, and if you think of it heavenly, it's also getting feedback from people, sometimes helpful and sometimes hurtful. Um, and it's the same in therapy. You go and you get it out of you. You get the feelings, the emotions out of you, except that you have a qualified person on the other end with no judgment to be able to give you the feedback that will help. Um, so I think it's, it's similar steps. One is putting it out on Facebook or Instagram or TikTok. Um, but the other one is in a safe space where you know the other person on the other end isn't judging you Here. and Here. has the tools to help you. Yeah. But you're right. People, watch, people will watch you and assume many things about what your life may be. I don't know that. I've, I've worked on TV many years. Mm -hmm. um, but, but we're human beings, all of us. And we have challenges that we face. Sometimes they get too hard to carry alone and nothing is wrong with getting help. And for some people, it's being beautiful. For some people, it's being rich. For some people, it's being strong. For some people, you know, we yeah. each carry a it label. Simone Biles. Yes, we you know, each carry a Olympics. label. And, and people expect us to live that label yeah. rather than be a human being. And then that just puts a certain amount of pressure on you to just keep on putting that facade, keep yeah. on being that... that smiley happy strong person because if you crack or you break then you are creating a sort of um uncomfortable environment for people that see you in a certain light and the journey for therapy is to create a healthy environment mm -hmm. which includes a health support system as well yeah, yeah. um healthy habits i i really encourage you know conversations on social media but then that's just one level mm -hmm. you want to have the therapy or you want to have the friends or the family system to support you and you want to continue building on that until the point where miss heavenly you become that person that feels whole mm -hmm. you know you become that person that you want to be for your children mm -hmm. and that's what you said you said i really want to be better so that my children can grow up feeling in a you know having good experiences and feeling good mm -hmm. and that's the process that takes you there checking in doing things right figuring out what went wrong i learned the term lessons learned there mm -hmm. are no mistakes no mm -hmm. failure we learn from our lessons mm -hmm. uh, and when you reframe when you look at things in a different perspective you are able to move forward a lot easier because you're no longer stuck in in i have to do it this way you know sometimes we're not doing things as efficiently or sometimes we can benefit from a little change in perspective mm -hmm. in order to do it in a way that's more satisfying and i'm really glad that miss heavenly you can have great moments in the day you can enjoy time with your children you can you know have a positive experience and then you can say you know what in this moment I'm feeling sad or I'm feeling depressed or sometimes like you said the emotion just comes out of nowhere yeah. uh, and you can have that experience and still have a range of experiences because even in depression even having a mental health um, illness you still have different moods you still have positive moments yeah. and you can still benefit yeah. from all of these experiences as well mm -hmm. You know, I think this is a great uh, jumping point for the broader conversation because I think when people think of, of mental illness, um, there's so many different disorders um, that are thrown around. And uh, Amy, we were talking before, you said you have clients coming in with TikTok videos saying, you know, I have these, these very serious Sometimes. disorders mm -hmm. because TikTok said so. I have these, these tendencies. I um, wouldn't put it that way. Okay. What happens is that r because we're out of school, we, we find that a lot of younger people spend a lot of time on social media and they may be experiencing some depression, they may be experiencing something different. Mm -hmm. 
and so you go on you know you google it you go on youtube you go on TikTok, and you find these people who say they feel the same way as you and so you find this community mm -hmm. and so just like how you have people on TikTok who share dances because i want to dance i i, mm -hmm. I choose to dance mm -hmm. you have some people who come on and say you know what um there there's there's I, I feel like I have these different voices inside my head yeah. or it could be um, I, I found an article with that uh, and and then you know you feel well it's like this I, I feel like there's a side of me that wants to do this thing but then there's another side of you and it becomes very easy to understand it that way and it could be very similar um, with with something like that and the other one i believe are tick disorders where you can go um and and you find it and, and i found articles online that shows you know you have a lot more people in an age group who are showing these symptoms yeah. who typically in that age group mm. don't show any symptoms mm. so you might have ADHD symptoms as well uh, and you see it and you can identify and what I must say is that on TikTok they have a very robust community and you actually feel like it's helping you because yeah. what it is it's masking other things that are underlying it could be anxiety it could be depression but the way it's presenting to you it seems like how your yeah. influencer has it and so I see it as because this is my community, it's not my classmates anymore. I feel like it's what makes me feel understood. And yeah. I think Miss Heavenly mentioned that as well. She said, I don't feel anybody understands me. Mm -hmm. I, and so when you go on these communities, because you tell your parents, I'm feeling funny, you don't have the words to say I'm depressed. That is true. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? And so you go on this community on, on um, I don't think we do Reddit that much, but yeah. Discord or, or, you know, Twitch, you go on TikTok and you have this very robust community of people who say, you know, if you're feeling this way, when I was feeling that, this is what I did. Yeah. And they have a lot of helpful guidelines. They yeah. have a lot of helpful tips online. Yeah. Uh, and that is what I don't want to say, don't do yeah. The, the social media but once you recognize that you feel different or there's similarities it. to what you see in yes. the video yeah. address it in yeah. real life it's a like lot when of the doctor tells you don't parents. take somebody else's medication because yeah. medication is personalized yes. to you it's like exactly what, um, mr vargas was just saying that it's different for other yeah. people so mm -hmm. you might think yeah. that it's similar and you have those and so even symptoms. if in your family there is depression it presents in you differently even mm -hmm. if in your family there is um anxiety it presents with you differently yeah. even if in your family there is adhd it presents in you differently mm -hmm. yeah you know and sometimes we we see behaviors that um, are more popular now you know we all when, whenever I come on the show I always say back in the day a lot of these things were present but they weren't Nobody talked about or, they yeah. weren't talked about or they weren't seen right now one of the things Miss Heavenly said is she has a history of trauma mm -hmm. and that for the most part says I don't trust people mm -hmm. so why would I trust a therapist who I have no idea how, how it works mm -hmm. and, and your story Heavenly I mean again I can't tell you how thankful we are for you to be brave to say that because people are getting more comfortable saying I'm a victim of abuse or I have suffered abuse in my life um, it's not as widespread in people expressing it but it is widespread in people who've experienced yeah, I want, it I want to um I want to bring I wanted to bring that to light you know I well not only in Belize but all around the world there is sexual harassment and and uh that all that in your family and with people from outside and the amount of people the population of people the amount of young girls and young mm -hmm. boys who go through this like 
like on an everyday basis, on yep. a daily basis at home or maybe as a babysitter mm-hmm. or with other family members, because your parents can't be there, because they can't do better and they have to be working and trying to provide for you, the amount of people who go through sexual harassment and then that is just like that nobody that talks about it like a huge part of your future like yeah. me right now i with what i went through when i was little i uh, that it's always in my head and i sometimes i try to block it out but it's always there mm-hmm. and the amount of people who who goes through that and and yeah. i feel like I don't even know what to say when it comes to that, to be honest, because yeah. you, you, I don't remember why I wouldn't tell my adults mm-hmm. around me, why I wouldn't tell them. Yeah. And, um, and still, I just recently started to talk about what happened and why I'm like this, like since in the past two years. Yeah. Because when I was 16 years old, I tried to commit suicide, and it it was all of that building up. And when you talk about like my my um like my age range of people, we feel I, I feel like. We're just like, I don't, I, I don't have the words to put it together, but it's, it's like, yeah, I can't put it it's, together. But, you know, I, I, I think what you have shared, um, is, is something that a lot of people who are watching and will watch will identify with. Mm-hmm that they go through very severe trauma in their lives. They don't talk to anyone. They keep on putting it aside. And then it still comes up, Mm -hmm. um, even when you are trying to to keep it in in distant memory or not think of it at all. Yes, and don't get help. I think you need to get help. Well, now I am looking to go and get help. I'm so happy to hear that. Yeah, Yeah. I'm so happy to hear that. It will make a difference. I, I, I'm, um, and I hope you find somebody you can trust uh, to be able to do that with. Jeremy, let's let's get you back into the conversation for a moment. Um, One of the things that we have, uh, we were talking a bit about social media, but one of the other um, aspects is how people are. self-diagnosing really severe uh, or, or complicated, I should say, mm-hmm. um, disorders. You know, it's like, oh, so-and-so uh, suffers from narcissism. Uh, they're bipolar. Um, you know, they have, um, what, what's the other one? Dissociative um, disorder. The, all these things um, that you, you guys study <laughs> in how to diagnose, um, people are simply assuming they have. Mm-hmm. What, what's 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 the implication here? So, social media platforms are designed to be short bursts of information. Mm-hmm. So, example, a TikTok video can only last about thirty seconds at the most. Um, YouTube is trying to do that same thing. Facebook, Instagram, all of them are designed for short bursts of information. And what the people are doing are they're condensing a lot of information into simple bullet points and it doesn't capture the whole essence of it. So someone might come and say, um, oh, I feel tired and I don't like to go out anymore. Then someone on social media will say, oh, that sounds like depression. You need to go read this article. That's like how Miss Amy was saying. And then you'll go and read that article and you'll start to say, I'm doing these things. I believe these things. Now I must be depressed. And then we start to live that as a truth, right? When in fact, a, a more education on it or talking to a mental health professional not even going for therapy, just having a conversation and calling could shed some light on that for you. Um, social media, having the ability to express your story helps the community because it helps others understand 
that you're not alone, but it also creates a, a sort of difficulty in that, okay, if I don't present like you, then I don't have what you have. Mm. I might have something different or I might have something worse mm. because we as human beings, we we're negative salience. We like to think worst case scenario <laughs> rather than positives. Say that and again. <laughs> it's universal, right? So anybody who's sitting is, at home thinking is. they're the only one with negative thoughts, <laughs> it's called no, realism. It, <laughs> yeah, it's self-preservation, right? Yeah. We got to think about the negative so we can prepare for them because that's what our anxious mind tells us. And we mm -hmm. all have anxiety. We all experience these mood dysregulations. For some, it's more intense. And that's where diagnostic criteria kicks in, right? So it's not just like you're supposed to be a happy person 100% of the time. That's that's an unfair expectation to yourself, mm -hmm. right? You are allowed to have those moments when you feel overwhelmed and frustrated and I can't do all these things at once and that's okay, right? But when it gets to the realm of, I can't do all these things at once and now I'm not feeding my dog or I'm not taking care of my child or I haven't taken a shower in weeks, then it becomes a clinically significant distress. And that's the key word right there, clinically significant distress. In all diagnostic criteria, that is one criteria that has to be met. You need to have clinically significant distress. Mm -hmm. And it, there's nothing wrong with not wanting to go out and wanting to be alone for a Saturday. That's, that's not a problem, right? We all have to recharge our own ways. Mm -hmm. but when it becomes a cyclical pattern, then people start to say, I need to go research this. And then yeah. they start self-diagnosing and self-medicating and that's yeah. when issues start to pop up, right? Yeah. And with the access of social media, we self-diagnose and we self-medicate, not necessarily with only medication, but with other things. Oh, that person says I need to start going out and going to the gym. Okay, fine, you start to do that, but nothing different happens, nothing mm -hmm. changes because there's a missing component there. Mm -hmm. It's not just the gym, for that person it's a valued activity. But for you, it might not be. Maybe for you, the valued activity is looking great. Yeah. So you spend that time on your nails, you spend that time on your makeup, contouring and everything and making it look <laughs> right on point, right? And that could be extremely helpful for you, yeah. right? Because yeah. it's what is of value to you. Mm. What about people that find themselves to be in denial? I mean, I'm sure that's something oh. that you both come across quite, quite often, right? But for those people that recognize that there is a problem, they probably should see somebody, but at the same time, they don't want to come to that conclusion that there's something wrong. So I always observe, what, I'm using the word always as in more than often, not as in every time, okay? Mm -hmm. I always observe that a lot of people that present who are in denial, they use other things to convince themselves mm -hmm. like oh it's not this it's COVID-19 going around mm -hmm. oh it's not this it's um I need I didn't make enough money this week so that's what the problem lies in oh it's not this um my mom or my dad is just being very aggressive to me right now yeah so we externalize it yeah because that's our self-preservation it's not a, a me it's a you all thing yeah. and yeah. when you start to look inside we start to notice how our actions, our, our belief systems, the way we see the world has an effect on the world. Mm -hmm. And whenever the denial presents, you always have to dig deeper because the denial is surface level. Yeah. Most of the time it's surface level. There's always something underneath that's feeding into that denial because either I'm not ready to talk about it yet or I don't feel like you're someone I can trust, so I'm going to deny it, mm -hmm. right? That's that's so interesting. That's why a lot of times it's close loved ones that will tell you or identify that perhaps it's time for you to take steps for your mental health mm -hmm. um, and talk to someone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, the support system is very important to build in. Um, it, it's very important to see as the, the therapist as one person in your support system. Mm -hmm. but to have other people in your support system. And if you come into therapy and you say, I rely only on myself before the end of our course of therapy, 
we, you usually have one or two people. So it's like when a student is being bullied at school, we don't say, go tell the teacher. We ask that child, who is someone you trust at this school? Mm -hmm. Go to that person, just mm -hmm. visit that person, you know, so that you can create that relationship. Um, I came across a TikTok a, a few weeks ago when it says, as adults, how do we make friends? Mm -hmm. By being in the same place consistently. Yeah. I loved it because as adults, we don't know how to make friends and <laughs> students right now, they're online. Yeah. So where do where are they consistently on social media? So that's where their support system is. Yes. Uh, and I think it's really important to, to understand that it's all a journey, you know? We're never going to be in the perfect place for a long time. Yeah. Uh, as, as Jeremy said, like happiness isn't something you will live in forever. Yeah. It's something you remember, you touched upon it. I was happy today, I smile today. Maybe I'll try it again tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> you know, there's, there's so much more we can talk about, but we're out of time <laughs> and uh, we have to keep on going with the show. But let me just bring Heavenly back in. I know uh, you shared your story, Heavenly, and the conversation is about your experience, but also just about how people um, are going through different things yeah. and how there is help available. So I, I do hope that you're able to get um, some support in all that you're dealing with. Um, and thank you once again for sharing your story. Mm -hmm. All right, and okay. you wanted me to say something? No, I was Sorry. just saying thank you. That's all for sharing. <laughs> um, and, and closing thoughts, Jeremy and Amy. Jeremy, Jeremy you go first, first, and then I'll I'll, okay. I'll 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 say all the resources. <laughs> Stigma will always exist. That's just a, a norm of the human population. But we have to find our people. We have to find the people we trust, and having conversations about them, about these things that are going on in our lives. Mm -hmm. So I encourage everyone who's watching this video, right, whether it's right now or later on, to find that person you trust and having the conversation about what you're going through. Because if you keep battling it alone, it will get to a point where you can't handle it as best as you can. And that's unfair to you. You want to give yourself a fighting chance. You want to give yourself the best possible outcome. So find that person you trust and share with them. Okay, whether it be on social media or in person. There are several resources in Belize. There are a lot more now than what there used to be. Mm -hmm. And that's very important to keep at the top of our conversation regarding mental health. I must point out that if there is not a need, there will not be services. So mm -hmm. in order to grow, the services in our community we really need to focus on having people demand it mm -hmm. right so we have to create and continue this conversation about mental health so that we can have more psychology professionals in the country we already have school counselors in the schools mm -hmm. so majority of the schools have school counselors and you can access counseling through them mm -hmm. and if it's something that is bigger than what a school counselor can can do because you know school counselors have a lot to do um, school counselors will refer mm -hmm. regarding community resources we have the community counseling center that's right um, and they're not just in belize city they travel outside as well mm -hmm. um, the ministry of health offers counseling as well as as well as other psychiatric services so we have the psychiatrist we have the the um the psychiatric nurse practitioners um, there are also social workers who can help you connect through mm -hmm. to counseling as well so you know there are referrals through that every clinic in every district has access to psychological services and in some places you can tell your community um, worker mm -hmm. and and they'll connect you to the services you might need right um there we do need more we yeah. do need a system we do need a way to have a referral so that if you're having a crisis at home there is someone to respond there is someone to take you even somewhere to take you even at three o'clock in the morning yeah. mm -hmm. i believe all the private and public hospitals have referrals as well mm -hmm. um, and many of the hospitals and, and clinics have counselors 
uh, which you can access through private practice as well. Yeah. Outside of that, the Ministry of Public Service offers uh, counseling through a referral system right. from their employee assistance program, as well as many of the bigger companies. So mm -hmm. some of the insurance companies, the electricity company, you know, the utility companies, um, the banks, they offer counseling that they will pay for a counselor for you. Some would be one session per year, some are three per year, some are eight per year. Mm -hmm. So you contact your HR person yeah. and sometimes they cover your children as well. Yeah. There's insurance companies that cover counseling. So, you know, there, there, is, there are resources mm -hmm. and there's always private practice. We have a lot of private practice. Jeremy and I are on the board to work on having um you know a more commune a stronger professional community in the country so that you know we can identify oh miss heavenly is in, in corazal these are the therapists who are in corazal yeah. yeah we need more of that and and where i send a lot of people because they have a lot of it in one place is mind health connect yeah. so if you go to the mindhealthconnect.com website they have all the resources i just mentioned as well uh -huh. Well, we are grateful for the conversation. Yes. It was extended, but always, as I said when we started, a good time to talk about mental health. Thank you all for Thank joining you. us this morning. And with that, we're going to go ahead and take a break, and we should focus to Black History Month. So please, stay tuned.